Senator Menendez. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chairman. Uh, I want to uh, start off by saying, Senator Clinton, I, I appreciate uh, the uh, significant voluntary steps that go above uh, and beyond the requirements of the law and ethics regulations that you have been willing to put forth. I think that they are exemplary and uh, should uh, answer a lot of people's concerns. Uh, and as I say, they are above and beyond the law and the ethics requirements, uh, and I appreciate that. Particularly, I appreciate that even pledges and proposed contributions to the Clinton Foundation uh, will be eligible for review uh, by the deputy legal advisor and uh, designated agency ethics official at, at the State Department. That, again, is above and beyond. And I think that that's the type of tone and tenor to set, and I want to salute you for, for doing that. Uh, you and I have had the conversation to talk about uh, something I care about a great deal, which is foreign assistance. Uh, we've held, uh, been privileged in the last uh, Congress to chair the subcommittee on foreign assistance, and we've held a series of hearings on it. You know, it's interesting to note that <clears throat> nearly a half a century ago, President Kennedy sent a letter to the Congress uh, in which he said some things that if we were to hear today would largely be the same. He said, the economic collapse of those free but less developed nations which now stand poised between sustained growth and economic chaos would be disastrous to our national security, harmful to our comparative prosperity, and offensive to our conscience. He said no objective supporter of foreign aid could be satisfied with the existing program, actually a multiplicity of programs, bureaucratically fragmented, awkward, slow, Administration is diffused over a haphazard and irrational structure covering at least four departments and several other agencies. And he went to talk about the morale of those employees trying to pursue that. That was nearly a half a century ago. And in some respects, I could say that that is a large degree of what we face today. Uh, so uh, as one of the most powerful tools of uh, soft diplomacy, uh, I'd like to hear, you know, some of us are concerned. I, I've heard the, about designation of Mr. Liu as the Deputy Secretary of State for Resources and Management, that he will be the advocate. You know, that's a broad title, a lot of resources, a lot of management. Uh, question is, you know, how do we ensure that we elevate foreign assistance? How do we ensure that we appoint a high-profile manager to lead that agency? a strong, independent uh, voice uh, for foreign assistance, building up the staff at AID, making sure that a lot of what's gone to the Defense Department by, by simply by uh, the, the lack of having the appropriate structure and effort at state comes back to state where it really should be done in cooperation with the Defense Department. Uh, give, us, give me a, a, a sense of confidence that uh, under your leadership, this is something that we're going to see pursued vigorously. Well, you have, um, you know, my commitment that it will be pursued vigor vigorously. It is an area that I care deeply about. It is where much of uh, my, you know, early public uh, voluntary uh, efforts uh, were directed, and I am hopeful, Senator, that we're going to put in place a system that will, number one, uh, rationalize what we have there now, and not only within the State Department and USAID, but as you know, there are uh, pockets of foreign aid programs across the government that are uh, technically under the coordination of the Secretary, but are not really working together as they should. And, and when we look at USAID, we've got to get a handle on the contracting out of um, functions and personnel. It leaves us without the capacity to respond to the many needs that we know are there. When we look at what's called the G function in the State Department, that's where you see population, migration, and refugees. And you know, having served uh, very happily in this body, I know how, um, how it seems that if an issue of such importance as refugees is not getting attention, then let's put a coordinator in the White House, and maybe that'll get people's attention. But of course, what we ought to be doing is making the existing uh, State Department uh, uh, programs work effectively. We have PEPFAR, which has been uh, very uh, successful and is a great tribute uh, to the Bush administration. Uh, but it is uh, within the State Department, but not within USAID. 
but it utilizes many of the development and health experts in USAID, both on the government payroll and on contracts, to actually do the work. We have the Millennium Challenge Corporation, which is a very creative and innovative approach to foreign aid, which is an independent uh, entity, uh, which again looks to USAID for advice and uh, expertise. So we've got to get our arms around uh, what you could think of as traditional foreign aid, health, education, economic empowerment, and the like, plus what is now becoming increasingly important, that's the reconstruction, stability, conflict resolution, peacekeeping uh, challenges that we face. Uh, and, Senator, I am determined that we're going to present to you a plan and a system that will try to maximize coordination, minimize redundancy, and make the case for the increased resources that are so desperately needed if we intend uh, to meet the missions that we've been given. Uh, and that is why uh, I think uh, Jack Liu, who will fill the deputy position on budget and resources, um, is the point of accountability uh, because so much of what we're going to have to straighten out and fix uh, are resource um, decisions. And we've got to make the case. I think Secretary Gates is open to the case. I know the president-elect is very uh, committed. Uh, he wants a... Uh, actually an increase in foreign aid because he believes so strongly in its efficacy as part of our foreign policy. They're, they're committed to transferring assets and uh, functions back to the State Department, but we have to prove that we're ready to take them on, that we're going to handle them, that we can instill confidence in you and Senator Cardin and others about these core functions and, you know, answer Senator DeMint's concerns about, you know, are we really doing what we need to do here? So that is my pledge to you, and I'm going to work uh, as hard as I know how to make it happen. Well, we look forward to working with you on that. Let me just talk, touch on specific areas, and, and then uh, uh, I hope not to give you any questions at the end of the day so you can move through the process, <laughs> uh, written questions. But uh, in 100 days, the new administration will inherit uh, the Summit of the Americas, uh, and it will be either the president elects imprint or it will be that which existed before. We have challenge in Latin America. Uh, and our challenge is our lack of engagement in a way that makes a difference. We need to care less about what Chavez does and more about what we do at the end of the day. And so I hope that uh, we can work with you and that the administration will focus very quickly uh, on what that summit is going to look like. And I hope that we have an America's uh, initiative uh, soon, uh, obviously not by the summit, uh, but at least talking about the outlines of what that will be. Uh, the hemisphere is incredibly important to us. It is in turmoil and challenge in many parts uh, of it, and, and I hope that that is something that we will look at very quickly. I know you supported the legislation we had that came to the committee in a bipartisan unanimous uh, on creating a social and economic development fund for the Americas. We, we call it to your attention. Two last areas uh, of the world. Uh, there are many, but uh, I hope that, uh, that the support that you gave while you were a senator uh, to the question of uh, the Armenian genocide uh, that the president-elect has himself uh, supported, the recogni recognition of that. You know, if we are to say never again, part of that is ultimately the recognition of what has happened so that we can move forward. And I hope that uh, you will be uh, uh, an advocate of having us get off of where we have been uh, and move forward to a recognition of that part of history that is universally recognized so that we can uh, move forward in that respect. And I also hope in, uh, uh, in a part of the world that's very important to me on uh, the question of the reunification of Cyprus, uh, that we have honest brokers at the State Department at the end of the day, one that recognizes that if Greek and Turkish Cypriots could work with each other, they would seek a by zonal, by communal federation that could move forward and reunify the island and end up the incredible militarization of that island, most militarized part of the world per capita. So uh, I hope uh, that you will look at those issues. Uh, I know the positions you've taken as a senator, and I applaud them. Uh, I hope that they won't change drastically as you move to uh, the Secretary of State. Well, senator, we will be looking very closely at those and other um uh, challenging issues with the eye of moving uh, forward and being effective in uh, uh, responding to these very uh, uh, legitimate uh, concerns. I look forward to supporting your nomination. Thank you, Senator Menendez.